Good morning, gladiators. Let's get started. All right, so we are working on, uh, actually, we're on the last week of the grading period. We are going back to a pink folder, week of October 12th through the 16th. All right, let me sit down here. And we will be learning today, um, Monday, October 12th. We're going to be learning about standard of living. There are a few things that you need to know. First of all, there is a quizzes uh, link, which is right here. This is what's going to be on your quiz this, this Friday, and it will also help you with your test next week. I have also emailed you that link, and I am attaching an economics test review ex is as, as well. That is also sitting here, okay? So please work on that. Your economics test review looks like this. I believe there are about 22 questions, yes. This is not due, this part here, is not due until the 23rd, all right? You'll see it here, complete the homework test review. Note, this is not due, this is due on Friday, October 23rd, the day of your test. All right, so today you're gonna be watching a video on standard of living. So we're gonna be talking about the importance of standard of living. Now, standard of living is, um, it can be very different for so many countries because in depending on the the economic status or the government control of that country it will determine what your standard of living is like in the united states because we have a free enterprise um, we are able to compete and have businesses and we're able to buy and sell whatever we want as long as that, you know, there's competition. And so people have that option. They have those options to go wherever they want in the United States. Whereas in other countries, some countries like a command economy is going to control, is going to control the economy. They're going to tell the people what to sell, whom to sell, uh, how much to sell. And that is going to also impact their standard of living because the majority of what is sold will end up going back in the government's hands. But that also affects the literacy rate. The literacy rate, if people aren't able to go to school, then they're not able to, to get a good education, right? They're not going to have a good education. They're not going to have the options to go and seek various, various different types of careers. But it really does impact it. Whereas in the United States, because we have free enterprise, because we have a capitalist uh, economy, we are able to go and go to school. We're able to learn. Okay. So that really affects our standard of living. That's why we, our standard of living is much higher. The literacy rate will impact the country, the country's economies. People need to know how to read and write. They need to know how to read and write when they're applying for a job. Even if they have, let's say they have a manufacturing position. Let's say in the United States, they have to know how to use those machines, right? They need, they need to be able to calculate certain things. They need to be able to understand how to take inventory, regardless of where you work. Even if you're working at a fast food restaurant, you need to be able to use the cash register. So you need to be able to understand and read the menu. You need to know how to put the menu in. So it, it doesn't matter the type of career that you have. Literacy is very important. So we do need to know how to read and write. In the United States, the, the literacy rate is about 99%, which is really good. Countries with high literacy rates are generally wealthier. Think of England, um, London, um, let's see, even parts of Australia, even parts of Africa, believe it or not, um, parts of South America, um, parts of Asia, the literacy rates are pretty high. But again, it depends on the countries in those continents. The standard of living is the economic level of the people in the country. So it's often higher in countries with high literacy rates. The standard of living is measured on how well off the people are in that country. Do they have adequate housing? Do they have, or do they have access to health care? Um, are they able to get food? Are they able to work where they want to work? Okay. So the cycle of poverty is dependent on reading and writing. Okay. It, it is just the way it is. If you can't, if you don't have an education, then more than likely you're going to live in poverty. Okay. So how do we improve literacy rate? 
obviously people need to be able to learn how to read and write, but in most governments, they're unable to do that. So you do have um, some missionaries that do go and aid groups um, to help the poor country and helping them in educating their children. That does happen a lot. And we will be learning about that today. Europe, uh, most European countries have a high literacy rate. And obviously their standard living is also high. And the same applies to uh, Germany. Russia, um, some parts of Russia have a lot of poverty. But again, we've talked about the type of government that they have. Even though they're able to vote for their president, we have talked about the government in that country. And we'll continue to learn more about them, especially as we're going to be going to Asia. But in some countries, for the most part, especially some countries in Russia, the Soviet Union or the former Soviet Union um, has assigned everyone a job. And even still today, a lot of those people are still working those positions. GDP is the gross domestic product, is the total value of all the goods and services produced in that country for one year. So it measures how rich or how poor the country is. Okay, it shows the country's economy. It's able to show whether the economy is getting better or it's getting worse. This is dependent on economic growth. Obviously, if you have a high gross domestic product, high GDP, then you're going to have a lot of people willing to open up businesses because they know that their business could potentially be very successful in that country. We talked about how in India, would it be uh, wise in the lower parts of the poorer parts of India to open up an Apple store? We had said no, because people wouldn't be able to afford the product. But we did say that people could open up a business there. And at that point, what would happen is it would kind of help the economy because now people are able to get jobs. Okay. Obviously, the higher the country's uh, gross domestic product, then the higher the better standard of living for that country. So in summary, to encourage economic growth and raise the living standards of its citizens, there must be investment in human capital. And we said the human capital are the people, that's the labor, and capital goods. Those are the, the equipment that they use to do their job. Economic growth is measured by increases in GDP over time. How large a nation's GDP can be determined by the availability and quality of its natural, human, and capital resources. Natural would be, do they have access to um, natural resources, oil, do they have agricultural, things like that. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit more about that today. All right, guys, so today this is what you will be working on. When you complete that, you're going to complete a standard of living activity. That's it. All right, if you have any questions, I will see you in Zoom. Have a great day.